Hi guys, welcome to Painting the Magpie Part 2. So I think it's time to start with the white feathers on this guy before I get into the blacks. So I'm using a larger brush and a smaller brush and an even smaller brush for mistakes. Um, and I've got my white ink and I use a mirrored palette I suppose. I don't know, it's just a piece of mirror. I found at a car boot sale for about 50 cents or what have you. Um, but you know, ink dries on absolutely everything and it's it's sort of permanent. I've, I've had it dry on plastics and then it won't come off so I don't want to use it on my watercolor palette. Um, I'd rather use it on the smear and, and then just scrape the ink off at the end um, if, I'm, if I'm too lazy to wash it off. And uh, then makes a bit of a problem because I have to import the watercolors to mix with the ink right there on the mirror but you know it's a small sacrifice and then I, I get to keep a pristine watercolor palette around my watercolors um, so yeah so time to put some feathers on this this big boy and um, um, I just noticed that I think I went up way too far on his neck I know he's got, you know, magpies have feathers on the tops of their wings and their bellies, but um, I think that's a bit far. I think what I'll do is I'll just grab the big brush and I'll take some of the white ink off right there. And it's very forgiving, so it's easy to do that and just mop it up a little bit. There we go. Oh, that's better. I'm happier with that. Can you see what I, what I was talking about in the last video? How blue the cast of the white ink is. It really has a very terrible blue sort of sheen and I don't like it. It looks very chalky. So I want to mix a bit of warm watercolor paint into it. Something like, oh I don't know, sepia or one of the umbers or you know something quite warm off my watercolor palette. And also a warmer blue in there because I don't want to have a brown shadow, especially since it's got black wings. And those black wings are casting a, a shadow on his white belly. So yeah, I think I'm happy with the sort of a taupey, warm taupey color underneath there. And then I have to start thinking about, you know, where's his wing uh, casting a shadow on his belly and where's the ground casting a shadow and how do I do an in-betweeny um, before I introduce the black feathers. So yeah, so I'm trying to think and blending it all in so it doesn't look like a big, you know, brown swatch of paint there. Um, and to blend it, I just clear off my brush and move it around and take some of the paint off and move the paint that's on the bird already around a little bit. Um, and then I can just go ahead and come in with some more white and touch up the edges. You know, once you start painting, you sort of get the idea of how wet or how dry you want your brush to be for whichever medium you're using. So for watercolors, I don't know, I, I, unless I'm doing like a serious wash, I don't like to have too wet a brush. And especially with these vintage papers, because they could really soak it up and it could be a mess. I'm just adding a little bit more warmer highlights because um, I'm not happy with the warmth of, of my shadow there. And now I'm going to do the top feathers. I'm going to use one of the warmer blues, not the cooler blues, um, to blend in some of the white. on his wing tops there.
And that's just a wet brush to blend it all in. So it doesn't look like a big mark there. I love the blending, I really do. I suppose that's why I love oil so much because um, blending colors, it just, you just make most incredible colors. All right, here we go. Brave step, here comes the black watercolor. And I'm telling you why brave, because once you put that black on, you cannot take it off. I mean, you can to a degree, but there's always going to be a smudge there, so you have to be really certain you know where you want it. Um, and so we know he has a sort of a black head, but um, I don't think he would have black cheeks because there would be some light shining on his puffy cheeks. So we want to blend it out and blend it out under his chin too because there's curves there and um, and reflections from the ground. I don't know what he's going to be standing on yet. I haven't decided that. I haven't painted his feet in because of that. I don't know if he's going to be end up standing on a branch or on a piece of wood or on the ground. I don't know. I sort of like him from up high, so I think he's going to be end up standing on a branch. Yeah, clean up the brush and um, blend it all in a little bit. It's amazing how the color moves around and and lifts and and doubles over on itself. I just love it. Here, I went over the edge a little bit and I just wanted to clean it up with a very, very clean, damp brush. Just picking up some of the, some of the shades there. I'm just going to put some black on my, my mirror palette so I can control how much I'm putting on. And pick it up when I want to. And I have to go now around that wing, around all that whiteness on the wing. Make the curve of his neck. This is definitely going to be darker on the curve of his neck, the back of his head. But the top of his head is going to reflect the light, so I'm going to try to keep that as light as possible while still making sure that it reads black. So I have to tell you guys, I was happily painting away on the magpie and um, thinking, oh, this is great, I'm taking a movie, I'm taking a movie, you'll be able to see what I'm doing in the next step. And um, then I peeked up on top of my stack of books, uh, where my iPhone is, and I thought, oh, it's not going. And that's because it stopped videotaping because I had run out of memory on my iPhone occupational hazard I suppose. So then I had to download all those pictures and videos into my computer and start again. And now I'm just pushing that black around so that you know the rest of his body reads black but doesn't actually look black. It doesn't look like it's solid black but people believe it's a black, you know, black and white sort of bird with reflections. Oh, you're going to laugh if I tell you this story. So at the moment, my iPhone is on top of a tall book, which is sort of balanced on its um, bottom edges in a triangle shape. And then there are three books on top of that. And then my iPhone, there's a little stick 
of ash holding it at an angle so it doesn't you know just videotape on straight down but at an angle and catches me painting and then there's a soft book holding the iPhone in place so yeah what a contraption um, and the reason is that we do have two tripods here at West Cottage but at the moment they're in Robert's garage and um, holding up the rear of the seat for Medusa because he has to get the seat you know situated properly before he can drive in there comfortably um, so yes yeah, so I've got this contraption so Robert promised to free one of the tripods for me so um, next video I can actually use it you know instead of this TP pile I have going on here beside me um, is I'm looking forward to having a tripod and actually making a decent movie. I might even be able to hook up my professional camera to it. That would be great. I'd love to see how that works. So there we go. This is the way we go. Up, up uh, the tail now with the black and his um, back wing tip. And just take your time and blend it. You know, it's amazing. This video is um, 28 minutes long. Holy smokes. I didn't even know that it was that long. I just started painting and um, Robbie asked me, you know, when can I come and give him a hand? When is the light over? And I said, oh, about three o'clock. And so we made a deal that at three o'clock I'll go and give him a hand with Medusa in the garage. And um, at three o'clock rolled around before I even knew it. It's amazing how once you start doing something you love, you know, like for me painting, or some other people writing or gardening or whatever the time just flies doesn't it now I'm going to try to um, put some sort of a sheen on this wing because we know it's black but um, it reflects blue so I don't want to lose the blue but I want to um, make it feel like it's a black wing. And I'm trying also to keep a light part in the shaft of the topmost feather. So I'm just going over that with a damp brush. And lifting up some of the color. Now that this part of the bird has dried, the black paint has dried, I can go over it and put another layer of blackness on it, make a, you know, like more shadow, more of a depth to it. 
always like coloring the eye in. Once I get the eye, I think that, you know, the bird comes to life. What color should I make his eye? I'm thinking they sort of have golden eyes, don't they? Somehow brownie golden eyes. Maybe they're black, I don't know. I think probably a brownie golden eye would be nice on him. It would be so much better to have that magpie sitting there posing for me. Sometimes it's, you know, guesswork. Sometimes I look at my books and sometimes I look at um, just photos of magpies to try to figure out what, what the thing looks like. I see them flying around outside, but without having one posing for me, it's really hard to gauge where the feathers are supposed to be. And the famous artist uh, Bob Bateman, he tends to have a few specimens around. He says he freezes them and then he paints them really quickly while they thaw out and he refreezes them. I don't know, I don't think I'm brave enough to do something like that. If I find a dead bird, you know, I just want to bury it, but uh, I suppose that's one way of doing it. here. Battery died. Sorry about that. That's what I was telling you about. The battery died and I had to go charge it up and put that book pile up again and start the second part because I'm not quite finished painting because I still have a little bit of light left. Daylight. Although Theo is on the window trying to chase a fly so he's cutting down my daylight substantially. Oh and Robert has got a tripod for me. And there we go, golden eye. And the tripod is going to arrive momentarily, unless Robert doesn't realize I'm making a video. <laughs> going to put a little bit of a white light in his eye. There is not better now he looks more alive. Oh yes, thank you. Wonderful tripod. I'm taping. So I think so far this magpie has taken about oh three, three and a half hours. It's not bad. 
I think it's probably going to be another hour before I get the legs and something for him to stand on. Just warm up his bill a little bit with a nice um, golden taupe color.
Well, that's about all the time I have. I did promise Robbie I'd go and give him a hand, so I'll have to put my brushes down now. But I hope you've enjoyed this next little installment. Well, 28 minutes of it, oh my gosh. Now I know why people fast forward the little videos they make, you know, because it must be tedious. I hope you're not too bored. Anyway, here we are. We're on our way to having a magpie on a piece of Mendelssohn. And um, next time I get to paint, he'll probably be standing on something. Tell me what you guys think, because I'd love to know what you think. And I'll see you later.